Hare Krishna devotees, welcome to Shloka Day. Today Shloka is Shloka number 4 of chapter 13. Tat Kshetram Yatcha Yadriksha Tat Kshetram Yatcha Yadriksha Yadvikari Yatascha Yad Yadvikari Yatascha Yad Sachayo Yat Prabhavascha Sachayo Yat Prabhavascha Tat Samasena Meshunu Tat Samasena Meshunu Word for word meaning translation and purport by His Divine Grace Srila A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada Srila Prabhupada Ki Tat Tat That That Chetram Chetram Field of Activities Field of Activities Yat Yat what? What? Cha. Cha. Also. Also. Yadrak. Yadrak. As it is. As it is. Cha. Cha. Also. Also. Yat. Yat. Having what? Having what? Vikari. Vikari. Changes. Changes. Yataha. Yataha. From which? From which? Cha. Cha. Also. Also. Yat. Yat. What? What? Saha. Saha. He. He. Cha. Cha. Also. Also. Yaha. Yaha. Who? Who? Yat. Yat. Having what? Having what? Prabhavaha. Prabhavaha. Influence. Influence. Cha. Cha. Also. Also. Tat. Tat. That. That. Samasena. Samasena. In summary. In summary. May. May. From me. From me. Shrunu. Shrunu. Understand. Understand. Translation. Now please hear my brief description. Now please hear my brief description. Of this field of activity of this field of activity and how it is constituted and how it is constituted what its changes are what its changes are whence it is produced whence it is produced who that knower of the field of activities is who that knower of the field of activities is and what his influences are and what his influences are <clears throat> Prabhupada writes a pretty short purport to the shloka. The Lord is describing the field of activities and the knower of the field of activities in their constitutional positions. One has to know how this body is constituted, the materials of which this body is made, under whose control this body is working, how the changes are taking place, where from the changes are coming, what the causes are, what the reasons are, what the ultimate goal of the individual soul is, and what the actual form of the individual soul is. One should also know the distinction between the individual living soul and the super soul, their different influences, their potentials, etc. One just has to understand this Bhagavad Gita directly from the description given by the Supreme Personality of God, and all this will be clarified. But one should be careful not to consider the Supreme Personality of Godhead in every body to be one with the individual soul, the jiva. This is something like equating the potent and the impotent. <clears throat> you have to remember that this last uh, six chapters is called Jnana Yoga or Sankhya Yoga. Sankhya Yoga, as we heard in a previous purport um, from last week, it's actually called as metaphysics in Western parlance. So if you keep analyzing matter, <clears throat> you should come to the conclusion that matter is not permanent. Then you should begin to question, well, if matter is not permanent, what is permanent? Then you'll come to the conclusion that the jivatma is eternal. Then you'll ask, so what is the jivatma's role if the jivatma is eternal? then you'll find out that Jivatma has to serve Paramatma. 
So by an analytical study of the material aspects in life, you should still come to the same conclusion that matter is impermanent and the Jivatma is eternal and the Jivatma's role is to be the servant of Paramatma. So essentially Krishna is saying, I'm going to answer the six questions you asked, which is Kshetra Kshetra Gnya, Jnana Gnyaya and Purusha and Prakriti. So His Grace Chaitanya Charan Prabhu writes, this is like a summary verse which describes all that are going to come later in this chapter. So this 13.4 will be explained in the upcoming shlokas. Example, in shloka 6, how is this body constituted? From shlokas 7 and 20, what changes this body undergoes? In shloka 6, 21 and 22, how and when and where the body is produced? In shlokas 14 to 18 and then shloka 23, the identity of the knower of the field of activities, which means who actually understands this body, who has cognizance of this body. And the influence of the knower, Prabhava, which is again covered in texts 14 to 18. <clears throat> Looking at one more commentary, you know, um, one of the meanings of the word Sankhya is to count. There is a saying in English, count me out of this. It's like saying, I won't participate in whatever uh, is being asked. Counting as a precursor to withdrawal comprises the modus operandi of the Sankhya system of philosophy. Sankhya specializes in analyzing material existence into its constitutional constituent elements. This exercise in intellectual deconstruction is meant to demystify worldly objects, thereby decreasing their lure. So even Sankhya Yoga philosophy has uh, a rationale behind it. The more and more you analyze matter around you, you realize because it is impermanent, your attraction to it will reduce. Through the eyes of Sankhya, we see that all material objects are essentially lumps of various material elements such as earth, water, fire and air, none of which trigger our fantasies of pleasure, as do sense objects. By contemplating that even the most alluring sense objects are essentially conglomerations of these unalluring elements, we can see through those objects seductiveness. So His Grace Chaitanya uh, Charan Prabhu is saying, when you just look at mud or you just look at water or fire or air by itself, it may not hold that much attraction to you. But a combination of these four or five elements then begin to attract your senses. So by analyzing, you will not be seduced by material objects. Your senses should not be seduced because you understand the logic behind the fact that these material elements will disappear one day. By further contemplation, when we can recognize that matter lacks consciousness. Whereas we ourselves possess consciousness. So after you are clear that matter is impermanent, then it helps you focus on who really you are. You have consciousness. So we can infer that we are different from matter. Accordingly, Sankhya bifurcates existence into two realities, conscious beings called Purusha and insentient matter called Prakriti. So by this analysis process, you understand that Prakriti is impermanent. Purusha is the person experiencing and manipulating Prakriti. These are also referred to as Kshetra, the field of action, specifically the body, the arena of action for embodied consciousness, and Kshetra Gnya, the knower of the field, the soul, the source of consciousness. So looking at it another way, 
Purusha and Prakriti. Purusha is enjoying Prakriti. You could say this body is Prakriti. That is Kshetra, the field. And the knower of the body, manipulating the body and matter, is the soul, the Kshetragnya. The Bhagavad Gita integrates Sankhya within its devotional Weltanschauung. In its 13th chapter, it probes the nature, provenance and transformation of the field of action and its knower. The Gita explains that our individual consciousness is eternally part of the infinite consciousness whose highest manifestation is the all-attractive Supreme Person, Krishna. We are meant to be united with Krishna in eternal ecstatic love. By Sankhya's intellectual deconstruction and Bhakti's spiritual redirection, we gradually count ourselves out of material existence in both conception and action. That is, we understand our non-material identity and redirect our innate longing for happiness from worldly objects towards Krishna, thereby paving our way to liberation from material existence. So it's very beautifully explained in this one commentary by His Grace Chaitanya Charan Prabhu what Sankhya philosophy really means. By analyzing matter, you come to the conclusion that all of this is temporary. Therefore, you also come to the conclusion that it is this consciousness that is eternal. It is just for whatever reason interacting with matter. When you realize that everything is impermanent, then you can redirect your consciousness to the Supreme Lord and move away <clears throat> from material things and material objects. So that is the essence of Sankhya philosophy. Of course, the Lord has not begun describing it yet. We will come to that in the future shlokas. If you like our videos, please subscribe to our channel and turn on the bell notification. If you'd like to join our classes every day, please check the details in the description section of this video. We look forward to serving you.